What is the most worthless part of a mattress? I want you to take a guess and tune in to find out how the innovators at Legan and Plaid have engineered out this waste of money to reduce costs, improve throughput, and pack more value into where it matters most in a mattress. The Dos Marcos Show begins right now. Listen to this information we got from Genesis Credit. According to Experian, 40% of Americans have a FICO score below 700. That means four of every 10 sales are potentially lost because a customer won't qualify for enough credit or at all through traditional financing. Fact is, customers deserve a second chance at affordable financing, and no one believes that more than Genesis Credit. As the industry's premier second look financing solution for over 20 years, Genesis provides high revolving credit lines for customers with FICO credit scores above 550. And Genesis wants retailers to know that, hey, if you're seeing lower credit lines and fewer credit approvals from your first finance option, let Genesis Credit take a second look. Find the right fit for your customers' financial needs at genesis-fs.com forward slash the fam. Be honest, how much do you spend each year on product photography? Aperture's the answer, Kinsley. Products and more products and vignettes and tens of thousands of dollars and reshoots. I mean, <laughs> the reshoots. And then it doesn't look consistent. Aperture is the answer. Look, the world's changed a lot. And one of the good changes is the tech driving Aperture. Aperture is the answer. All right, Quinn, you don't have to say Aperture is the answer anymore. So why don't you go ahead and tell them why? Because it's the only tech company that William Sonoma ever bought. And for good reason, Kinsley. They had the same problems with product photography, and now they don't. And now you won't. Let's say you need a mattress photo. Boom. Place that beautiful bed inside Aperture's nifty 20 by 20 beauty box. Press a button. And the Aperture machine does all of the rest, all the lighting and cropping and shadows, all of it. And better yet, once you need a different background or different lighting, no reshoots. Your visual factory in a box does all the work. And you know what? You save some money, you save some time, and you create product photography that can move at the speed of your ideas. Start today at OutwardInc.com and tell them Dos Marcos sent you. Because why? Aperture's, Aperture's the, answer. the answer. Welcome to the Dos Marcos Show with Mark Kinsley and Mark Quinn, where mattress and furniture leaders gather to grow, get the inside scoop, tell stories, and take tequila shots. Uno, dos, tequila! The galaxy's greatest mattress podcast has liftoff in... Three. Quinn, I feel like the gang is back together again. Jason and Cody and you. I mean, a few people are missing, but this is like the core gang. Well, for, for the record, Kinsley, when you and I were at Leggett and Platt, people said we would destroy the company. And I think Cody and Jason being here is evidence that we did not, in fact, destroy the company. Right, Cody? <laughs> I think some people may disagree with that, but... No, I think we're a good time. So we or, did just want to be back together. Okay. <laughs> Either that or these two guys are still putting it back together in the wake of Mark and Mark. <laughs> it created a lot of job security for us. We have a lot of work to do in the, the aftermath of that. <laughs> Come on. Well, Come for, on. for those who don't know, we are here with Jason Jewett. He's the vice president of product development with Legan and Platt and Cody Messner, the vice president of sales. And we're old friends. And we worked together at Legan and Platt and had a great time. And it was such a, it really was a magical period in my life where I, you know, I went from being on the agency side of the business and Quinn was my client to coming in house full time and working at Legan at this big, you know, $4 billion company at the time with 22,000 employees. And we had this creative department in house. And, you know, I got exposed to, you know, product development for the first time and, understanding how we worked with customers and the innovation that was happening within Legan and Platt. And I got to know some really good friends. So I'm really excited just to be back together and talk shop a little bit because one of the things that Quinn and I spent so much of our time focusing on is we're doing such amazing things at Legan and Platt. Let's go tell the world about it. And so we thought, hey, let's get Jason and Cody on the podcast to, to talk about some of that innovation so when, whenever you, let's, let's jump into it. Whenever you guys look at the lay of the land for the mattress industry and how Leggett plays in that space in terms of innovation, Jason, how do you see 
how Legit interfaces because it's such an integral part of so many different clients and so many different manufacturers. Yeah, well, first we we like to just listen to our customers, and and without doing that, uh, we we don't make much progress. We've uh, really, on the whole, over the years, or, or I think it's fair to say decades, if we can acknowledge a problem and truly understand what a what a problem is and and identify it well, we've got a pretty good track record of coming up for a solution. And uh, that's that's what we like to do. And you, you don't you don't find those problems without paying close attention to the industry and, and most importantly, uh, listening to the customer. I can't tell you how many times that Quinn, I mean, we, we would sit there and think about what was happening and have opinions. But then all of a sudden we needed to go back and do the research and do that deep dive work. Jason, like you're talking about in terms of listening to the customer, listening to the industry. I remember working on quantum edge products and listening to the RSA just to find out, does the edge of a mattress even come up and, and putting in that work on the front end allowed you to kind of, you know, grease the skids and make sure you had a, a good plan that wasn't just based on opinion and assumption. And so you guys, I, I know, do a really good job of working with customers and finding those solutions. What What's the... What's a recent example or maybe something you've been working on for a while where you listen to the customer, something bubbled up and it turned into product or innovation? Yeah, um, well, it, you know, you mentioned you mentioned Quantum Edge, which is one part of our Edge family of products, you know, followed up with Caliber Edge. And, and, and those came from that situation, right, where we, we recognized a, a problem, a bottleneck, et cetera, a need for better performance. And so kind of along that same flavor, um, we, we also more recently, you know, have been paying attention to base foam underneath the mattress, right? This is your typical one inch layer of foam that goes underneath a, a pocketed coil unit. And typically, you know, you might say, well, base foam doesn't sound like something super exciting. It's, it's kind of the least exciting part of the mattress, right? It, and uh, that's actually what led us where where we went. Um, you know, the more we thought about it, we thought, you know, base foam doesn't have any value to the end consumer. It doesn't impact their sleep experience in a, in a positive way uh, or, or a negative way. It, it simply has this uh, uh, structural need to hold the shape of the pocket coil unit. And so as we went down that path, we also recognized um, from a manufacturing perspective, if you're, if you're trying to attach this base foam to the mattress, it, it, it creates a lot of inefficiencies, a lot of unnecessary labor. And, and again, we're kind of doing that, yet it doesn't have any value to the consumer sleep experience. And so we thought, wow, what a, what a perfect target to uh, start exploring some solutions for. Which is, I mean, the, so the the whole process, you guys, it's not just, I, I know when Mark and I were there, it was, to, to Mark's point earlier, it's not just about, like, listening to your betting brand customer, the manufacturer, but you guys are leapfrogging and you are going into the retail sales associate and you're listening to them and you're asking them questions. And now with Elite Comfort Solutions as part of the Legged family, like, you've got more of a direct line of sight into in some of that information. Cody, how has it kind of changed the way you look at the product development process and in in bringing the new the new things to market that you are? Well, I definitely think the the acquisition of Elite, you know, caused us to, you know, as before, maybe we we didn't always consider the aspects of, of foam and how it worked and, and the impact of, of our development on, on that side of the business. Um, but I would say that you know there's a good collaboration between the two organizations, and as we look at development, I mean, in this case, right, we're actually putting something forth into the market that replaces base foam. And so in some instances you could say, well, is, is that really good for, for the business? And, and I think our, we came to a mutual just, uh, conclusion that it was. Um, you know, in this case, we're really helping the OEM manufacturer um, improve, as Jason said, throughput in the factory. And by doing that, we are also allowing them to add value where they may have put it underneath the mattress into the top. And or in this kind of environment that we're in today, um, you know, we can look at it from an inflationary perspective and say, this is an opportunity to improve the product, the performance of the product, and also reduce cost. Let's do a quick reset. Quick yeah, reset, okay? Because right. there are people out here who don't build mattresses, who don't know 
what base foam might might mean. And we have a lot of manufacturers in this audience for sure. We have a lot of retailers, RSAs, but sometimes people are new. So let's just paint a picture real quickly of how a mattress is currently built today. Because you have this piece of base foam and fill in, fill in the gaps for me here, Jason. So you put down the piece of base foam, you put glue on it, you put the pocketed coil unit on top of that, you got to align it. What else? Yeah, sure. And, and, and really to take a step back from that, we'll think about the whole purpose of the base foam. You know, a, a typical uh, comfort core or a pocketed coil unit in the generic sense, um, it's, it's length and width wise, it's not static. Right, it, it has a bit of an accordion to it. It, it wants to move, and of course, uh, everybody wants their mattress, uh, you know, a, a precise dimension, depending on what size they're targeting. And so that over time, it became uh, common to put this one inch of polyurethane foam on the bottom to hold that length and width dimension. And so, really, when we when we dug into it, we thought, geez, that's that's the only true value added purpose of of this rather expensive piece of foam that's going underneath the mattress. Um, so to go a step further, so, uh, you know, obviously your, you know, most mattresses, of course, are one-sided these days. And, you know, you have your comfort layer on top, and then you have this base foam on the bottom side of the pocket coil unit. And it requires, as you mentioned, gluing it on there or adhering it in some manner. But throughout that process, someone has to flip that mattress or someone has to invest in equipment that would flip the mattress. And, and there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of elbow grease, I suppose, and, and sweat that goes into it, um, you know, if, if you're on an assembly line. Um, so all that tended to seem like a, a, a bit much for something, again, that, that doesn't help the sleep experience any. Um, and as I give you a, a good enough visual of, of uh, how it's how it's made. Absolutely. I mean, it's really kind of a, a three step process that you remove from manufacturing the, the gluing, the aligning, the flipping versus you're saying. So the quantum edge and the caliber edge, I think you call it the enhanced profile with eco base. So this is going to be coming into the factory with a like a stiff substrate that takes the place of that base foam. And it's already put together. It's already assembled. And right. to make up for that height, have you have you spiked the coil in a way to, to add that extra inch into the coil? Yeah, it's it's um, we haven't done anything really differently from uh, the, the preload or, or spike, as you said, on the coil. Uh, but we we came up with some uh, kind of really cool tricks that are done at the machine that uh, uh, allow us to increase the really the performance of the fabric that encases the coil. And because of that, we can go with uh, uh, higher performing designs of the coil itself. And that allows us to uh, you know, perhaps reduce wire gauge. And you take all those factors uh, into account and, and at the end of the day, you can have uh, uh, the same overall profile when you uh, remove the base foam and instead use EcoBase. Um, and uh, yet have a, a really solid value proposition. around it. The, the cost numbers work out at the end of the day. And so that's, that was, again, something we got excited about was, you know, here's a way we can eliminate this uh, really unnecessary thing on the bottom of a mattress, um, keep our overall height profile, and, and yet have a solid just kind of common sense value proposition. Yeah, and that's right, Jason's point. We, we really, in talking about the, uh, development process. When we first came up with this idea, we were putting it on an eight inch coil system. So taking an existing system and, and adding EcoBase. And then with some customer feedback, we, we realized, you know, the customer, initial customer sampling, they wanted the eight inch profile. And then they came back to us and said, you know, we're recognizing that we're losing an inch of mattress height. So what can be done here? And that's when the development team went to work and really a more mindful use of wire to uh, improve performance. And I think that's a real key differentiator here is as we look at these new, uh, this evolution of quantum edge and caliber edge to these taller profile, you know, incorporating eco base, we are finding that the, the products and the performance of that product is improved. So edge performance is improved uh, prior to the legacy units. And um, that's a real key, you know, key difference here. Um, we're also able to, uh, kind of take a sustainable approach in reduction of base foam is an improvement in use of petrochemicals, right? So as we replace each one inch layer of base foam with EcoBase, 
and increase the profile of the wire. Um, obviously, from that perspective, the use of petrochemicals that would have gone into producing that foam is reduced. Um, it's a roughly 80% uh, if you look at what's used in EcoBase, which is a 100% uh, polyester nonwoven um, compared to, to what we would find in, uh, say, a 1.8 pound piece of uh, one inch polyfoam. Huge. Yeah, I mean, it, it supports the story of like you're using upcycled steel, right? So you already have the benefit of telling that story. And now that you throw the eco base in, like there's a lot of benefit there. You know, when I was reading through some of the documentation, guys, it's clear that there's a uh, not just a uh, a benefit, but a savings really in cost. And then when you look at all the labor where you're not having to flip these beds and there's a lot of things that they're not having to do and it's already attached, right? It's coming in already attached eco bases to the coil. Like that's a massive uh, benefit to the manufacturer. At least it seems like to me, it's a whole nother step they're not having to go through, am I right? It, it is, someone on Jason's team did a lot of work and they went back and they said, okay, you know, if you think about uh, the elimination of this piece of base foam and the fact that eco base comes pre-attached, there's no uh, change in how the coil system is received and processed um, through the manufacturing, but you are removing the, the labor that's required to, to bring the foam from the truck to inventory, from inventory to the build station. You're eliminating an entire glue process and layer of glue because the, the, the comfort core unit would have come to this build station with pre-attached uh, scrim on top and bottom. In this case, we're replacing one layer of scrim with the integrated base layer, which is EcoBase. So, so that gluing, uh, that is required and, and the glue itself as a material content is, is eliminated. And then you're also eliminating a complete station of labor, right? So if someone has a conveyor system where they're we're pushing product through, um, that, that process gets sped up because you're eliminating a whole step. But if someone has a standalone uh, build station where, eco, or where base, base foam is being applied, that station is just no longer necessary. And what we see with customers is there's really two processes for applying base foam when they're doing it. That is that they can, they can spray the foam on a build station and then try to position the coil on top, which can be difficult because the, the coil is heavy and as you move it around, you try to get it you know, right. And if you don't have an automated flip table, they can delaminate during the flipping process. The other application that we often see is someone takes the base foam, they apply glue, they then take that layer, flip it over on top of the coil, position it, and then they flip it. So with EcoBase, to, to Jason's point, the, uh, the base layer is trimmed flush with the coil unit. It's pre-positioned. It helps hold the coil shape. So during assembly, um, positioning and, and manipulating the coil to even apply your top layers of foam is no longer necessary. So it's a, I think from, from our customer perspective, that is the most, ex one of the most exciting aspects of this new product. It's crazy yeah, to me to I, also I, just think it took this long for <laughs> us to engineer as an industry, this piece of commodity foam out. Cause I, I remember talking to you about this in the past, Jason, and we were at, we were at ISPA Expo. And it was like, there's no value in that base foam being at the bottom. It's just a sizing mechanism and all the other, it served all the other purposes that you described. But now we can move that value into the top of the mattress with specialty foams or different filling materials that you can actually, as an RSA or uh, as a manufacturer, build value in because absent of value, yes. people are going to make decisions yeah. on price. I, that's that's a, a wonderful point we like to talk about is there's there's really two ways you can kind of slice this, right? You can say, I'm going to reduce my overall costs of my mattress, right, without impacting the performance of it. Or you can say, you know, I might save some money by using EcoBase. I'm going to invest that savings into the comfort layer where it does impact sleeper, right, where it does impact that sleep experience. So there's there's really two different approaches depending on, uh, you know, what tool you need for the job. Well, you know, it's a good point, Jason, because yeah, we, right now everyone's looking for pennies, brother. You know, I mean, really, when it comes to, yeah. you know, uh, the cost of a bed and trying to get more aggressive on the low end or anywhere for that matter. And Kinsley, you're right. It reminds me of wheeled luggage, right? It's like, how long did we 
how long did we take to put a wheel on a bag that was heavy as hell to carry places, right? Uh, and, and, and we finally figured out that a wheel would make it easier to move luggage through an airport. And here we are in this industry, you know, innovation continues to come up. And, you know, Leggett, once again, has brought innovation. I mean, really, the quantum edge thing where, and I was there for that. And, and I'll never forget Eric Freeman actually bringing up in a product development meeting at the Idea Center and talking about extending, taking foam out of the, the bed and then extending steel to the edge. So it would give a better experience on the edge. Kinsley did some great work on the quantum edge and, and building value in that. But it's another great example of Leggett really putting some thought to, hey, how do we make it more efficient? How do we make it perform better? And how do we make it work better ultimately for the consumer at the end of the day? And the fact that there's a great sustainability, sustainability story here uh, is even, uh, you know, it's the icing on the cake, as they say. Yeah, Mark, that's a really good point. I mean, yeah, we're, Ecobase is kind of the next evolution, right, of, of Quantum Edge. And Quantum Edge, when it came to the market, did exactly what Ecobase is, is doing as well, which is it did improve performance of the product, but it also eliminated a lot of labor in our customers' plants. And I think that's a really a key point here. You know, I don't... It's always been our intent to try to look at that from a development perspective and how we engineer product. But with the, the pandemic kind of shining a light on a lot of things and, you know, tight labor market being one of them, um, I think that the timing of this is really, really appropriate. It's a good point on the labor market, Cody. I mean, there's a lot of people facing those things, that's for sure. I mean, you know, the, the, the instability of the labor market, the cost of the labor market, all of those things, um, everyone's dealing with it all. So, yeah, great point. So how's everything else at Leggett? You know, like, speaking of... Spe go ahead, Kinsley. Speaking of the labor market, let's go there for a minute because this is a real concern for manufacturers, component suppliers, uh, people uh, around the world. And as you look at the labor market, and Leggett's obviously in the components business and the machinery business and has tentacles all over this industry, how are you seeing your customers react to the labor market, maybe labor shortages? Are they bringing in more automation, more machinery? Are they really putting processes like base foam and different aspects of the manufacturing process under a microscope? What's your, what's your read on the lay of the land there? Yeah, I don't think it's uh, one size fits all, but I certainly think for, for the vast majority of our customers, you know, labor continues to be a concern, um, albeit with, with, you know, recent slowdown in the last few quarters, just due to macroeconomic, you know, conditions, I think that that's, that's changed a bit. But there is concern that if, if even though it, during the slowdown, labor retention is so critical right now, right? So I think uh, application for unemployment uh, remains really low, like in pre-pandemic levels. And there's a general fear that even though business is slowed, We've got to retain our good labor. And, and in doing that, you know, this product, EcoBase as an example, uh, Quantum Edge as an example, it's not to replace labor, but it's to make the labor that you have more efficient and more effective, right, to do other things. And I think that from an from a overall market perspective, that's what we're hearing from our customers. Um, there are some that still deal with labor, um, you know, or turnover, I think, is high. Obviously, wages have gone up significantly um, over the last year. Um, but but from a from an overall perspective, it is uh, I think currently just a concern not to get too lean um, and certainly to, to not to try to lose really good you know qualified people that have been with you know organizations for a long time or at least in the short term have proven themselves out to be a really really strong workforce. You know I don't think people realize yeah, I, it's been in Actory how much hands on work is done at Leggett or even in a bedding factory. I mean mattresses are handmade. And there's a lot of labor involved in that. Um, Jason, on the development side, you know, you guys said that you deliver these the same. So the eco base is underneath the coil, but you flat that, you squish them all and you roll them up into a bundle just like you normally do now. And I'm assuming that if you can do that, then it's also good for bed in the box as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it comes packaged the same way it always has, uh, compressed and rolled, you know, with multiple units in a, in a roll of, of pocket coils. Um, and, and I'm glad you brought up the bed in the box part. You know, we, we mentioned stabilizing the dimensions of the, the pocketed coil unit, we'll say in the, the X and Y direction, right? Uh, X and Y axis. 
uh, but we knew for bed in the box that it was important that while this, this eco base is rigid from these two directions in that third dimension, the Z axis, it, it needs to bend, right? It needs to be able to compress, fold and roll for bed in the box applications. So absolutely, that was a, a, a key requirement as we approached it. You know, one of the things I wanna point out about innovation at Legan and Platt is like you said at the very beginning, Jason, it's so often driven by talking to your customers, listening to their needs, and then coming up with pathways that create products for them. I can't, unless you've been behind the scenes, I can't communicate how difficult that is to do when you have lots of different machinery involved and you have wire that you're drawing down and putting in different gauges and you're bending that wire and you're putting in the side pockets and machinery. And then you're putting this you know, rigid substrate underneath it. And then you have to get that rigid substrate to actually roll and fold and do all the things while maintaining the dimensions. And then you're doing this on a massive scale. So it, uh, the, the innovation side of this piece is really hard to understand unless you've seen it up close and personal. And I would encourage anybody to go over to bettingcomponents.com and check out the products there in the videos and, and dive deeper into some of that. It, it makes it sound simple when we say, hey, we're just going to put this uh, eco base thing and we're just going to stick it on the bottom of the pocket coil unit and, and we're done. And uh, it's, it's, of course, much more complicated when that, uh, than that when it comes to, you know, large scale manufacturing. And that's that's where our, our spuel partners and our Swiss based engineering team uh, comes in and uh, does a lot of work to design some really cool gizmos to go on the, the, the machinery to allow us to do this and, and allow it to come out with a, uh, a good clean fit and finish. Wow. Your question around bed in the box, you know, the, the other benefit to EcoBase is, is, is really twofold, right? Um, commodity foam is typically used on the base of a coil and commodity foam is lower density than, than most other foam. So recovery um, is a concern, uh, can be with, with commodity foam. Obviously, with EcoBase, given the profile and the in the composition, there isn't a recovery concern. But even more important is the concern of oversaturating a mattress with glue. Um, in this case, you're 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 eliminating an entire layer. So um, with with EcoBase from from a bed in the box perspective, a compression, fold and roll recovery, um, it really is a great solution, and it does kind of ease the mind uh, in terms of recovery and, and what you might find with uh, oversaturation of glue. You know, one thing, guys, I've heard a lot of talk about lately from our retail partners that carry any type of bed in the box inside their retail locations is a born on date. I've heard that term come up over and over again because retailers are starting to understand that mattresses that have been compressed and rolled, depending on the composition, the foams, different things, may not recover the way that they want that mattress to recover for their consumers. So they're putting a close watch on those born on dates and they want to understand how much shelf life they have before they expire in a sense. So that yeah. is such a key point. That, that's especially important if uh, you sacrifice a bit on the, uh, the foam specifications, right? Uh, if you if you try to cut a corner, uh, it'll it'll show up. You know, that the compress I always say the compress fold and roll process is the most brutal thing a mattress is ever going to go through. You know, if it if it opens up out of the box and it looks great, uh, chances are the consumer is going to have years and years of of great use out of it. Hey, you guys, Cody, what you're showing this now? I, my favorite part of the development process is when you get it ready for prime time and you start rolling it out to people and showing it to people. Uh, you guys have shown it to some people now. What are you hearing? Like, like, is there anything surprising that people are saying? Or what are your customers telling you about EcoBase and, and how they think it might be able to help them? Sure. So, so we're at the infancy of this, right? I mean, we, we mentioned earlier that we had rolled out some product at, at 8 inch and came back and, and went, you know, back through the development process again to increase the profile uh, while, you know, while trying to be mindful of cost. And so... We've, we've launched three three different products so far, um, one one set seven inch unit and two eight inch units. One of those being Caliber Edge and the other having Quantum Edge. Um, the Quantum Edge one was the most recent to to complete kind of our, our beta runs and sampling. Um, feedback has been really positive. 
uh, but we're still rolling out samples. I think some of our advertising will, will start to break here shortly um, as we ramp up production. Um, to Jason's point earlier, right, and, and Mark's, it sounds simple in concept to be able to do this, but it's required us to develop some tooling and modify some equipment. And so as we've uh, added more tooling and capability, we're able to, to, to kind of improve the suite of products and the offering. And we'll, we'll, the next phase will be kind of a quantum edge, you know, elite uh, version, uh, which would be quantum coils all the way around with EcoBase on the bottom. But feedback so far has been really positive. Our customers have been really great about, um, you know, talking to us, especially those on kind of the front edge on, on what they're seeing and finding and how it's kind of helped them out. Um, but I would say that we're, we're, we're really early in this and just excited for, for what's to come. Guys, I, I love surfacing some of what's happening behind the scenes because for the retailer and for those on the front line selling to the consumer, they need to understand this, absorb it, build it into their selling process and know how products are made. They need that deep dive. This, the other piece of this that I think is really important is if the industry changes and it truly shifts toward a different style of product and you don't have the ability to manufacture that product, you are going to be behind. I saw that shift happen with pocketed coils. We saw that shift happen. We saw that shift happen with Quantum Edge replacing foam encasement for many of the same reasons we're talking about replacing base foam. You know, you have to people don't want to feel like they're going to roll off. They wanted a consistent sleep surface. You know, foam was not inherently a load bearing material. So you had a buckling effect and it started to blow out the sides of beds, um, depending on the construction. But as the industry shifted toward pocketed coils or toward uh, quantum edge, if you didn't have the ability to manufacture that in your environment for some of the people that are more vertical, you're going to be behind. So, so I think keeping an awareness of this and knowing what leg it does and, and staying dialed into that innovation is going to keep you ahead of the game because these changes can come and be here before you know they've hit you. That's a good point, Mark. And I would just say that there's some other products that we're really excited about uh, along a similar vein, right, that, that look at the aspects that are, you know, customers face in their manufacturing plants and with kind of, again, the, the tight labor market and how we can add value to their manufacturing process by eliminating or reducing steps. Um, we're, we're really excited about more of this type of uh, evolution and design to come forward. And I think you'll be hearing more about it in the, you know, the coming months. We'll have to have you guys back. We'll have to have you back. Keep us posted. We love to hear about the innovation at Legging Platte. Um, we, we, we lived in, you know, with you guys at the idea center and with that team and, Cody with the sales team and talking to customers. So it's just really good to kind of get the group back together again and see what's going on. And, and as those new innovations roll out, come back, come back to the podcast. We'd love to have you guys here again. Well, I, I appreciate being invited. Um, you guys know, I love this kind of thing, um, but also uh, <laughs> just the warm opening and uh, kind of the, you know, the, the, it was a, it was a good time. It was a good age and uh, you guys are missed and the things that you have done for Legend and Cloud are not lost on us. And so we really do appreciate this uh, continuation and, and collaboration. And though we don't get to work with you every day, uh, this is just a nice bonus. You're going to make Quinn cry. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know what? It, you know, I have to say uh, yeah, that wouldn't be hard. I mean, I, but you know why? I would because, like, I get emotional about people and I get emotional about experiences. And I have to tell you, like, for people who don't know that are watching this, and, and Kinsley can back me up on this, but – you know, the, the the really special thing about your company that I still refer to as my company, because after spending time there, you know, you, you feel like you're part of it. But, you know, the people inside of Leggett are really remarkable. And you guys are so blessed to get to work with some really incredible, very smart people that built a very dynamic company that is a huge, critical part of our industry. And... Uh, I'm so excited that you guys are innovating and driving new stuff into the market. We need that thinking. We need innovation. And you guys are big, but being big does not make you a leader. Uh, doing this kind of stuff makes you a leader. And so keep pushing over there and uh, really glad to get to be on the show with you guys. And do me a favor. Do Kinsley a favor. Go back and uh, wish everyone well for us and uh, let them know that we're, uh, we're we're thinking about them always. Kinsey, I know you want to add something to that. Yeah, just make a little noise in the hallways at Leggett because I know that part 
is definitely underrepresented since Quinn and I left. <laughs> With an emphasis on Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, we, we have been short on rap videos ever since you guys left, and uh, it, we're, we're hoping to get back there. And that's tragic, Jason. <laughs> we, uh, we people know used to tell me they would know, know when I was coming because they would hear me walk a certain way. Sorry, Kenzie, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. I always say you hear Quinn coming before you see him, and <laughs> so and you and sometimes he might have been singing the rap lyrics to the Get Hybrid video that Leggett so graciously uh, approved. Or, or well, people like me at Leggett because I used to be. Yeah, right, right, right. Out of tune or not, people like me because I used to bring bacon to the morning meetings. That's that was my you know way to endear myself. <laughs> to them. I carried on that tradition, the Did demand really? meeting. I carried on the, yeah, I carried on the <laughs> tradition of bringing bacon. And uh, usually Eric Freeman would eat the bacon and then people would kind of hold back and then I could get a few takers toward the end. So, <laughs> I'm taking hopefully notes. somebody carried, carried the bacon torch forward. Yeah. <laughs> Who didn't like bacon, right? Well, guys, well, thanks for being on the show. It's great to see you both. Um, please send our best to everybody at Leggett. And if anybody wants to get more information about these products, I know you can go to bettingcomponents.com. Is there any other place that they would need to look at to get more information about EcoBase and everything else that Leggett does? That is the, the absolute best, best way to, to view. And then, of course, uh, your local Leggett and Platt sales representative will be uh, coming around. And, and, you know, if you haven't been sampled yet, uh, they're, they're available. And we are uh, actively out pushing the product and advertising to follow. Is it true that they Excellent. mentioned Dos Marcos and they get a 30% discount on all opening orders? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's correct. Yeah, I think that's correct. You're talking to a guy you. that has a very hard time paying for a haircut. Okay. But his haircut does look nice. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> all right, you guys be right, well. well, hey, like well it. What is a hybrid? It's like peanut butter jelly, peanut butter chocolate. Hybrid so tight, there's no way that you could topple it. Hybrid on my wrist, that's a calculator watch. We add ourselves together and we take it up a notch. Got the airflow, yo, keep you cool as that get. Visco foam alone to make you drip sweat. Get a hybrid mattress, yes, you'll get better rest. Cool and comfortable, I'm hybrid like a sweater vest. You know the game, we're ahead of the sun. Cause the two of us together are way better than one. Cause I'm cool. Cool as ice. And I'm hot like a heater. Bounce by the ounce. Now we got it by the leader. Well, you take a spring and you wrap it up right. You can sleep so smooth or bounce all night. Yeah. Put the two together, get a whole lot more. Get the feel of the comfort core. You can bounce on it. Lay back, you don't have to practice. It's the best thing to happen to your mattress. Get together to do it like I did. Everybody get high. If you want somebody to get in your vicinity, you probably want to feel a little bit of a hybridity. Foam alone, out of five, maybe one star. Springs and foam, we're taking care of that lumbar. Mad back support, the best way to shack up or just get rest that won't mess your back up. Like a hot chick mixed with a particle physicist or a mullet. Party in the back of the business. Best of both worlds like Mars and Venus. The ultimate hybrid. Nothing short of cheap. Keeping it loose while keeping it tight We can make you sleep or play all night Put two together, get a whole lot more Get the feel of a comfort core You can bounce on it No stopping when the beat gets played back Springs keep it popping, foam keeps it laid back Party over here, get invited Everybody get hybrid kitchen is charming when your bedroom's the most important part of the apartment what kind of bed do you keep back there does your girl want to chill on a beanbag chair hell no you need springs and foam because if that bowling ball don't bounce you'll be sleeping alone and if the bed don't react then you can't get low we got the type of bounce that won't spill your merlot so stick with us and you'll get rewarded because i'm so gentle and i'm so supportive is where the magic is. And we just killed a song about mattresses. Oh!